Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, we're going to be unboxing, reviewing, and par testing this. This is the Sehon SH1200 with supplemental UV blue and infrared bar. Okay, let's get to unboxing. So, in the box we have user manual, Australian power cord with an on off switch and an IP rated connection, ratchet hangers, hanging wires, and the light itself. That is a really nice, that is a nice, heavy, well put together light. I really like that. There is a lot of weight in this light. Okay, so let's have a discussion about some of the features of this light. This is the Sehon SH1200. It is a full spectrum quantum board style grow light that has 296 pieces of Osram Ozsonic 3030 LED diodes spaced across its PCB. The diodes include deep red 660 nanometer, 2700K white, and 5000K white, as well as sporting a switched supplement bar running down the center of the light, which has diodes of UVA 390 nanometer, infrared 730 nanometer, and blue 460 nanometer, making this light have an extremely full spectrum. This supplemental bar down the center can be switched on and off depending on your style of growing, although I'd probably recommend keeping it on most of the time. The light is dimmable, 5% to 100%. However, it cannot be switched off with the dimmer knob. It's a really solid aluminum build and sports a finned heat sink to passively dissipate heat through a thermal paste and into the heat sink behind the PCB, cooling the LED diodes and making sure that they have a long life. The footprint for this light is three by three and the claimed efficacy is 2.7 micromoles per joule. So let's put over a PAR sensor and measure the output. So one thing I will say is I'm not particularly a fan of the one point of hanging, purely because you lose so much height but you can see for me it's a problem because it doesn't stay straight on my bed. So what I'm going to do is, and we can just clip on our ratchet. And you can see at this really low light, you've got a really intense blue and UV spectrum. I can't see the UV obviously, but uh, if we turn it up, it sort of merges into all of the other spectrum. Put some tape on our driver and heat sink. We can take our measurements. And let's have a look. Wow. Yeah, this is running. It's not even warm. 29 degrees Celsius on the finned heat sink. 84.5 degrees Fahrenheit, 26.7 degrees Celsius on the driver, which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not even breaking a sweat. I would say that this enclosure is overkill for a 100 watt light, but that's fine. That's what you want because it's gonna last a long time. All right, let's have a look at the watt draw. And as you can see there, 105 watts. And just because I can, let's turn the UV bar off. Whoa, there's a heap, of, that's, a, that's a big difference in the color temperature. Okay, we've got 106 watts. I think the UV bar is taking power away from the other lights. But have a look at this color temperature difference when I do this. It's a huge difference there. I'd be really interested to see how plants respond to this. So if we have a look in the middle, you can see the PPF difference in the center with the light bar on and the light bar off. 735 when it's off, 694 when it's on. So there's actually, I'd say that my quantum meter isn't picking up the wavelengths of the UV and the blue light because it's specifically 
programmed for certain wavelengths. So I'm just going to quickly go through and test it with the bar off because it's actually giving me a higher PPFD reading with the middle bar off. So let's do that just so that I can give you a proper understanding of the light. Yeah, it's already higher. Okay, interesting. Okay, so this is definitely one of the more interesting lights that I've had to test because the supplemental bar changed the results. And I think that that is because the PAR sensor is picking up on the usable light that the science behind the PAR sensor says that plants want to use. Now, I'm not gonna get into a discussion about UV um, and IR and what ratios plants use them in. I think it would depend on the plant species anyway, but it definitely affected the test results. Now, the first test that I did was with the bar on, and here is the map. The average across that map was 236. We then divide that by the watt draw of 105, and we get an efficacy of 2.24. Now, that's a really good efficacy, but if we test the light with the supplemental bar off, it actually makes the average on the PAR map rise. So here is the PAR map for with the supplemental bar off. And as I said, I think this is because of the spectrum that my Apogee MQ500 is measuring. The average across that PAR map was 249, which we then divide by the watt draw times by the area, and we get an efficacy of 2.37. Now that is a really good efficacy and I believe it because the light is not giving off much heat at all. And with the oversized heat sinks for the size light, I think you can expect this light to last a long time, especially paired with the Osram diodes. They're the same diodes that companies like Mars Hydro use. This is a great, affordable, well-built light that someone has put a lot of thought into bringing together and I'm rather impressed with how it functions. Okay, well, happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose.